Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to use this foam pattern to make two solid aluminum Lynx shields. If you don't know who Link is, he's from the Legend of Zelda series. He's destined to fight evil and save the land of Hyrule. So this all started by me carving out a shield with my CNC router. I carved it out of polystyrene XPS foam. I made two of them, and this first one I coated with a layer of plaster, or drywall mud. Just regular joint compound. This second one I saved for you guys. I didn't coat this so I can show you the process of coating it. Before applying the joint compound, I always spray it down with some soapy water. And this is the joint compound that I use. I mixed some up in a separate container with some water and applied it to the foam. I used a soft bristle brush to spread it out over the entire pattern. After applying the plaster, I let them set for 24 to 48 hours before actually performing what is called the lost foam casting process. I'm now going to put this in a drum and fill it up with dry sand all the way to the top. Later on in the video, I'll be pouring molten metal into this pattern and it will burn away the foam and take its shape. Now that I'm up to the top of the foam, I'll be placing a can with the hole cut out of the bottom surrounding the foam. I'll then be adding more sand around the can to lock it into place. And now I need to go around my yard to find some metal that I'll be melting down. This scrap aluminum will work perfectly. Now it's time to light my propane furnace and start melting down that scrap aluminum going to be doing a voiceover on the entire video, but I want you to sit back and relax and enjoy watching melting down that aluminum. now melted down and it's now time to scrape away the dross that has floated to the top of the molten metal. The dross is impurities in the metal but could also be other things that were attached to the aluminum that I put into the furnace. And with the dross removed it's now time to pour that molten aluminum into the mold that I previously made. I 
have now filled this up with molten aluminum. It has burned away all that foam and taken its shape. After placing the crucible back into the furnace, I'll be scraping away some of the residue from the molten aluminum that has floated to the top of that can. This isn't necessary, it's just fun to watch. As I said in the beginning, I made two of these, so I'm going to be melting down some more aluminum and cast another one. This seems to have more dross than the last batch of aluminum that I melted. I think it's because some of the aluminum that I placed in the furnace had rubber feet connected to them. After filling this can with molten aluminum, I still have more metal in the crucible. I'm going to be putting the crucible back in the furnace just like I did before and prepare a graphite ingot mold to pour the remainder molten metal into. will be great because I can store them and they take up much less room than that scrap aluminum that I had laying in my yard. While I wait for that to cool down and solidify, I'm going to remove the shields from the sand. By the looks of it, I have a perfectly good Lynx shield out of solid aluminum. I'll now dip this into some water to cool it off.
And now I'm going to remove the second one. And this one came out just as good as the first one. The lost foam casting process is a super easy metal casting method. I really do enjoy making new things using foam. All right guys, back in the garage, I've already cut these away from the extra aluminum and now I have two good shields. I'll just need to sand these down using this Vivor sander. You can pick these up from Home Depot and they're pretty inexpensive. I'll use this sander to clean up the perimeter of the shield. Then I'll just use my drill to clean up the face of the shield using a 240 grit sanding disc. With the face of the shield sanded down, I now need to remove the plaster that's still on the inside. So I'm going to be doing this in two ways. This first way, I'm going to be using a bucket of water to wet down the plaster and brush it away with a toothbrush. Doing it this way will leave the recessed area a darker color. For the second way, I'll be using a Dremel tool with a wire wheel to get rid of any of that plaster in that recessed area. Doing it this way, you won't have that darker shade so here's the one that I used the Dremel tool to get rid of that plaster. And you can see there isn't really much contrast. But now this one is the one I used the water and the toothbrush to get rid of the plaster. This leaves the darker shade which gives it way more contrast. Leave a comment on which one you like better. The one with the aluminum background or the one with the black background. And don't forget to like the video. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe.